lot of people attend the event and they ask me this question, what is so unique about this event? Um, and I sometimes jokingly say it's imperfect. You know, so nothing in the next today and tomorrow you would see would be perfect. Actually, it has a lot of imperfections. But I can tell you it has a lot of love, it has a lot of warmth, it has a lot of compassion. So I hope we are in the next, till by the end of tomorrow evening, we would have given you an abundance of love an abundance of compassion, an abundance of warmth. This is the fifth year of the India Inclusion Summit, and I must confess, when we started this in 2012, we never expected it to last that long. Last week, I met a friend in the Silicon Valley and asked him, you know, how many times do you have to do something before it becomes a habit, before it's sustainable? And he said, Feroz, you have to do it at least 10 times. And so in some ways, I'm happy that we've done it half the number of times. So this is the fifth time. And I must confess, it's still not a habit. We still keep doing stuff. We still keep making mistakes. But it's a lot of fun. A lot of people have asked me, is this just an event? And I say, it is not an event. It is actually a movement. And a lot of times, I have to keep explaining how does an event lead to a movement. And every movement in the world has taken years and decades to become a reality. My belief is that our mission of making India inclusive will take some time. But we at least have a blueprint. We at least think there are steps that we have to do that would make our country inclusive and the world inclusive. So how do you go from an event to a movement? We believe that an event starts in this form where we have like-minded people coming together wanting to make a meaningful difference to the society. That's how it all starts. And people come and ask me, can you tell me what really happened? You know, is, is it something like you come, you have fun, you go back, and nothing changes? You know, every journalist asks me, Firoz, can you measure the impact of the India Inclusion Summit? I said, I don't know. There are a lot of things that happen as a ripple effect of the event. People meet, people get ideas, people get inspired. I don't know how to put inspiration, smiles, love, warmth in a two by two matrix. You know, I come from the corporate world. Everything has to be put in a matrix. Everything has to have a profit and loss. I don't know how to do that. But I believe there are a lot of intangibles from this event. And when a lot of intangibles come together, we have a tangible impact. But I believe there are four steps to this. When you do an event many times, it creates a community. And one of the things that we did this time is identified five fellows who are passionate about the topic of inclusion. We support them. You'll hear them later in the evening. To build a community of like-minded people who are passionate about inclusion, we have to build a strong community. So the second step is basically moving from doing an event to building a community which helps each other. And I think we've taken the first step towards that this year with the inclusion fellows. What happens after that? The third step, typically, is to drive what I call meaningful projects, which has clear outcomes. We did a few. Some were successful, some were not. And I think that's the future. In a few years, we will start driving projects that make a meaningful difference and create tangible impact. And the last step is basically how do you architect the future, the future of the country, the future of the world to become truly inclusive. I believe that this is a mission for my lifetime. And if I'm able to do that along with all of you, we will make a meaningful difference. And the first thing I realized is that you can't do it on your own. It's just not possible. You may be the smartest kid. You may be the brightest mind. You cannot do it on your own. You need every possible hand on the table to make this difference. I'm an incredibly grateful to some outstanding people that I've met in the last five years who have contributed in their own small ways to make a meaningful difference to the society. And the next person whom I'm going to invite is somebody who is extremely dear to me. And she said a few things that have actually changed my life. There was a time two years back when my team came back and said, Feroz, the event is ready, but we don't have the funds. This always happens, by the way. Right? And I got this check with no questions asked. Not too many people do that. I know it from the corporate world. He said, Feroz, this is a noble mission. 
we will support you wholeheartedly. Then this person came and said, Firoz, you have a young kid. My children have grown up. They are on their own. I want you to spend some quality time with your children. I, I am here to fulfill your dream. Let me confess, nobody in my life has come and said, Firoz, I am here to fulfill your dream to make India inclusive. It gives me great pleasure to invite my dear friend and one of the, somebody whom I deeply admire, Pankaja Mann.